wisdom, stand aright, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. At that time, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man, mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the ruler of the demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. The Lord said to his disciples, These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, Therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Helper comes... Whom I shall send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think he offers God's service. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Slava Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, have you ever read spy novels? I don't know if uh, people read spy novels anymore. I know lots of people watch spy movies. So it's kind of a similar, similar thing. Spy novels or spy movies, or even good detective uh, books, have as one of their central sort of motifs this secret identity, secret identity, the the, uh, understanding that appearances can be deceiving, that although we might apprehend something or think a certain way, uh, deep down inside that character is different than what they portray, that they have a secret life that they are living. And in our gospel today, brothers and sisters, we see something very similar. We see two responses to the Lord, two responses to Jesus and who he is, one given to us by the two blind men and the other given to us by the Pharisees. Both see exactly the same thing and both interpret what they see in very different ways. Let's start with the two blind men. The two blind men are shouting out in order to get Jesus' attention, Son of David, Son of David. Now, that might not mean too much to us, but those were politically charged words. You were not supposed to mention those sorts of things in Roman-occupied territory, because what that basically means is, 
this person is the rightful king. This person is the son of David. This person is the Messiah who the Lord has promised he will send in order to liberate his people. So it's no, no surprise to us that these two blind beggars are sort of hushed up inside the house. They're sent into the house in order to get them out of the public eye where our Lord has this incredible conversation with them. Do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe that I can do this? And they say, yes. And the Lord doesn't cure them immediately. He says, well, according to your faith, we'll see. And sure enough, they do see. They do see. Because, brothers and sisters, they know who Christ is. They know who Christ is. They know what his secret identity is. And yet at the same time, brothers and sisters, looking in on this, and after the healing of the the demon-possessed man, are the Pharisees there, standing, witnessing it all, and responding in a completely different way. This man casts out demons through the prince of demons. He is doing these things because he has sold his soul to the devil, and the devil has given him this power to mislead the people. You see these two incredible differences, right? These poor Pharisees are so cynical that they can't even rejoice in the good that was done. They can't even take a look and see that these men who were blind are now able to see. and It does not move them to joy or to happiness or to the man who was possessed by demons and is now freed. They are not rejoicing in the fact that good is winning over evil. They cannot see past that. In fact, all they see instead is a man who they think is working for his own good, and his own good by being in league with evil. Well, what does it mean for us when we read these things, when we see this gospel proclaimed today? How should it change the way we behave, we act? I would propose three things. Number one, if you are going to be living an authentic Christian life, and if you are going to be proclaiming the gospel, the real gospel, you can expect resistance. You can expect resistance. Do not be surprised with persecution. You see, brothers and sisters, this gospel happening is just before our Lord sends out all of, the, uh, all of his disciples. And the one afterwards, which we we'll read for uh, Boris and Hlieb today, we see the same thing. That our Lord says, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. If they're going to listen to me, they're going to listen to you too. But not to be surprised when we bump up against resistance. It did not come as a surprise to our Lord. It did not come as a surprise to the apostles. And it shouldn't come as a surprise to us. But there's good news in that. Because, brothers and sisters, when we encounter that resistance, when we encounter that persecution for the sake of the gospel, not because we've done something wrong, but because we're actually doing the thing we're supposed to do, we can do exactly what the Lord says. And that is, we can rejoice and be glad. We can rejoice and be glad. When you're persecuted, when people utter false things against you for the Lord's name, we can rejoice because it is a confirmation that we are doing the thing we're supposed to do. We can expect resistance. So don't waste time and energy, brothers and sisters, being outraged by the outrageous things that are done because of the gospel, against the gospel. But instead, see that as a confirmation and continue to the, my second point, which is to continue confidently, to continue confidently. Our Lord here is beginning to lead. He's beginning to show forth a different way. And when that happens, you naturally run up against people who are not interested in that leadership. They're not interested in that change. But he doesn't back down. He continues confidently. And we need to do the same thing. In order to continue confidently, I'd like to bring to mind two things. The first is what St. Paul says, the confirmation of the love of God. He says that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not angels or demons or principalities or powers what's going to come in the future or what happened before, none of those things can separate you from the love of God. And we could add invasions and we could add pandemics to that. We could add all sorts of other sufferings that we have encountered. None of those things can separate you 
from God's love. In fact, if you think about it, brothers and sisters, even your sinfulness, even your sins, don't stop the Lord's love for you. Those who are in heaven will experience the Lord's love as continual, everlasting bliss, ultimate happiness and fulfillment. Those who are in hell will experience the Lord's love as everlasting torment. But God's love doesn't change. God's love is for you always. Because of that, we can continue confidently in walking the Christian life. The second thing that will help us to continue confidently, brothers and sisters, is to remember the gift we've been given in the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ has been entrusted to you and entrusted to me. And that's worth suffering for. That's worth the pain. It's worth the difficulties in bringing that amazing message of God's salvation to everyone we know. It's worth the fight, in other words. Continue confidently, brothers and sisters. And finally, we have to continue compassionately. Continue compassionately. We take a look at what the Pharisees are saying. This guy's in it for his own gain. He's only interested in power. And yet, they couldn't be further from the truth. Constantly, we read in the Gospel that the Lord looked at them with compassion because he recognized that they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were aimless, directionless, and lost. And our Lord moved in his love for them, responded with his generous love. It's incredible. The Pharisees are cynical. They can't even rejoice at the blind man. But our Lord is compassionate and loving. We must accompany people, brothers and sisters. This is what Pope Francis speaks often about, accompaniment, accompanying, walking with the other. We can never turn to our brothers or sisters and say, you're not worth it, or you're a write-off, or forget you, I've got other things to do. Right? We must always turn to our brothers and sisters in the way that our Lord turned to us. He never wrote us off. And so we must do the same thing. And accompanying me, walking with the other, always means, in a Christian context, that we are walking in a certain direction. It is not that we are aimlessly walking with them. We are walking with them towards the Lord. We are walking with them towards God, who loves them and is waiting for them. Sometimes it takes the moral courage necessary to say, I can't walk with you in the direction that you would prefer. I can't go there with you because you're insisting on going there. But come with me. Come this way. Come with me and let's walk together and I'll walk with you. And so, brothers and sisters, we must continue compassionately in proclaiming the good news of our Lord to this world. Brothers and sisters, the world needs this gospel, the good news of what Jesus has done. Let us not be shocked by the resistance we encounter, the persecution even that this good news will entail when we share it. But let us continue confidently and compassionately to proclaim Christ's resurrection and his saving power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Slava Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus Christ.